I'm going to call the uh, meeting to order. Please all rise for pleasure. Pleasure, ladies and gentlemen. To the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> Okay, I want to ask for a report of the agenda today this week. Are there any changes to the agenda? I have one change. Um, the legal appointment, uh, legal counsel that's listed in the appointment section, um, I would like to move to a closed session under uh, the Homeowner Association Act, uh, Section 11B, 111, uh, number 4, uh, uh, subsection 6. Uh, for uh, contractual negotiations, uh, there have been discussions uh, with that being posted to the agenda that will be relevant to take into closed session um, so that we can have a, 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 a in-depth discussion. Any objections to that being added? Okay. Um, I also would like to make a change on the uh, appointments. And to add, Marty Clark is the chair for bylaws and resolutions committee. Any objections to that change? No. In favor? All right. A motion to accept the agenda. Do I have a motion to accept? So so we'll second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed to accepting the agenda? I think Cheryl just called it. Cheryl Who the agenda? Uh. Okay, approval of the minutes. June 23rd, special meeting. Uh, any changes anyone wants to make to the minutes of the June 23rd special meeting? Motion. Motion. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. July 20th, regular meeting. Message for approval. Any changes to that? Minutes? Move to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 July 28th, 2016, regular meeting. I ask for approval. Move to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 August 22nd, organizational meeting, approval of minutes. Move to approve. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 August 26th, 2016, special meeting. Asking for approval. Minutes. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 September 9th, 2016, special meeting. Approval of minutes. We'll be Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Well, first of all, I'd like to thank you, every one of you, to attend and take time out from your busy schedule to show interest in the governance of your community. Also, to those that are uh, at home and may be watching this live, thank you also. I appreciate the interest that the community is showing towards the sport. Uh, if you all don't know, this is a different format from the last couple of years. Uh, we're trying this on a trial basis where we have a working session first, <coughs> where every director, including department heads and association members, can come and give their feedback, ideas, opinions on how um, the different um, issues that we discuss. And from that work session, that's how we're forming some of the agenda, most of the agenda for the regular board meeting, which is held on Saturday and hopefully to increase interest from part-timers and those who work during the week. So it's very important we encourage everyone to attend these work sessions. Uh, the next one is scheduled for October 17th, I believe. Um, you're more than welcome to provide your feedback <laughs> at that time on each agenda topic. Uh, and we do encourage you to do so. Uh, 
Additionally, I'd like to encourage anyone who has a special interest in any one of our advisory committees. Um, the expertise and the analysis and research provides the board guidance in all these different aspects of the 12 or 13 advisory committees that we have. Um, additionally, we're looking for uh, new people who are probably seven or eight of these committees, uh, particularly the Marine Committee, which has been inactive for over a year. If anyone has interest in that, I would encourage them to uh, fill out uh, an application. So thank you. I appreciate your help. And all feedback is wel welcome and considered. With that, we'll go to the Treasury report. Pat? Good morning. If I lose my voice, I apologize. I have a little bit of laryngitis going, but I'll, I'll try. Uh, operating results for the four months ended August 31st. On operating revenue for assessments and other, we have a net operating re revenue of three million five. These are all in, in thousands for the presentation. Net operating revenue of three million five, and that is due to the fact that we collect all the assessments up front and they're spent during the year. So as the year goes on, that net operating from services goes down. Uh, on the amenities line, the net operating for the first four months is 1.2 million. The variances from budget in those areas, the revenue variance was 169,000 less than, less than budget, and that was driven primarily by the amenities revenue being under budget by 185,000. On the expense variance, it was 100 in total. For the organization, expense variance was $149,000 under budget, and that was driven by almost exclusively wages and benefits being under budget by $100,000. <coughs> Any questions on you? We do that? I'm so used no. to doing that. No. Okay, <laughs> reserves. <laughs> reserves. Uh, the balance May 1st, $5.7 million additions during the year almost 3.7 million, and again, that's driven by the assessment collection. Expenditures out for the first four months, almost 1.3 million. So the net in uh, reserves at, is $8 million. And the, the note is simply um, a, a reference to an accounting entry that had to be made to transfer the operating recovery reserve to the balance sheet, which is where it should have been. For the last couple of months, and it was, it was, the entry was late being made. Some people had questions about why that was there. For collections, uh, this is through the four months. We've collected a little over 95% of assessments, and year to date, from prior year's assessments, we've written off 38,000. For our receivables, we have about 1.36 million in receivables, and you can see the breakdown year to year, current one year, two years. Three years, we have about $584,000 in receivables, and we have reserved against that about $190,000. Capital spending year to date, actual, $897,000, and budget variance from what we had budgeted for those capital items purchased was $44,000. And the bulkhead and waterways reserve balance is $1.8 million, and the spending to date is $30,000. Uh, general manager's report, Brett Hill. <clears throat> okay, um, so I'm on my 29th day, I think, in, in this. Uh, we, we actually have, uh, I've, I think, accomplished a lot in, in, in about a month here. Um, I, I'm going to kind of go through the bullet points I have. On the Yacht Club, uh, we already talked, we got rid of the odor uh, almost a month ago now. Um, we're I'm working aggressively with uh, Jerry, Brian, and Rob to uh, look at the event schedule through the end of the year and uh, move us on a path forward to bringing us closer to budget. Where uh, the yacht club right now, uh, year to date, is a, has not met its budget numbers. Um, we are, uh, I believe, on the right path. Uh, set up some really great events going through the fall with some bands coming into the upstairs. We're working through uh, the new menu, which uh, Still needs a few tweaks, hoping early October that will be rolled out. And uh, with that, I, I, I think there's a few more events that we're going to add in and we're talking through. I have been, uh, myself, talking with 
uh, a lot of our neighbors over in uh, Ocean City who have been very kind in offering uh, support to us um, across the the uh, Fagers, uh, the captain's, captain's table owners, the donors, um, and they've been very kind in offering feedback and areas of support for Jerry and the team to, to help fine-tune our operations and um, really deliver the, the, the best product and value to to our residents. At the, uh, at the golf club, we, uh, we started the repair process for mold and water damage. Uh, Public Works has been out almost daily working at the club. We, uh, we think we have a, a fairly reasonable plan to uh, stabilize the, the structure in the building over there and improve the, the working conditions for our staff. ServPro is working through the process for uh, mold remediation and treatment. Uh, we've had roofing contractors and mechanical contractors in to stabilize the water damage and our uh, lack of uh, heat and air conditioning in certain areas of the building. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've begun the process of beautification on the property. Um, I gave the go-ahead this week for, uh, for I believe it's going to be Arbor, Arbor Bites. I'm not. I'm not a horticulturalist, so I, 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 um, it, they are. They're, we're going to be putting in uh, approximately 80 uh, eight foot tall bushes, spaced every six feet, along the cart barn and the maintenance uh, shed to create a natural fence to um, give basically a better appearance to our golfers, and not have to look at uh, what is somewhat unattractive buildings and um, and utility. Uh, appliances and such out there, so I, I think you know we're on the right steps to to, to making our, our golf course an even better place to play. <clears throat> At the beach club, we we got an engineering report back on the building. Uh, Public Works has already started making some of the repairs that were uh, being critical in that report. Uh, they are uh, as of yesterday about a quarter of the way through putting all new railings and supports around the upstairs deck. And we're working on a plan uh, to still have some work done in the bathrooms. It's definitely not going to be a new building for next year, uh, as far as the bathrooms go. But I believe I believe we're close to a solid a solid plan there, and uh, I'm excited to see that forward. For our major projects that we have already started, the uh, pickleball conversion uh, that is on track for a early November completion. It's a, about a four to six week process. We're, we're just at the beginning of the process. And the payments were released to order the materials and uh, that all started in the last 10 days. Uh, platform tennis, I know we had a uh, slated repair there that was very minor work. Uh, that's uh, gonna go into courts one and two. That's going to take place the week of October 3rd. It's a two to three day process where we have disturbance on the but uh, those courts will be resurfaced and, and in great plane shape. Um, we're hoping uh, right around the 5th or 6th. Um, the White Horse Park bathrooms, um, you can see hopefully when you came in here, we actually have walls up. Our, we, our roof trusses were uh, delayed in manufacturing. Um, by about a week, so they're they're a little behind in delivery. They're gonna they're gonna come in uh, right on September 30th, which is Friday. We're expecting them to be installed the week of third. And despite that delay, the contractors advised us advised us that we are still on track for December 1st uh, occupancy on the building. <clears throat> the bridge repairs. Uh, Jerry has had uh, several meetings with the state and the contractor and looking at traffic maintenance and, um, and, and scheduling for use of our roads. We are scheduled to start on uh, Monday the 3rd. Uh, that's going to be over on the Clubhouse Drive, uh, Clubhouse Road Bridge going into the golf course. That bridge will uh, have work being performed for the first two weeks underneath of the bridge, starting on or about the, the 15th, probably the 17th, being it's a Monday, we will move to temporary lane closures and begin to work on the structure on top of the bridge. There's going to be about two weeks of work on each side uh, with you know, the lane closure shifting from side to side for a period for a month 
total. Around November 15th, when they're done that bridge, they're going to move out to Ocean Parkway. Um, that's the bridge just to the north of 90. That bridge will have the same roughly six-week schedule where the remainder of November would be work performed underneath of the bridge. And throughout the month of December, we would have lane closures on each side of the bridge about two weeks per side. And that puts us wrapping up right at the end of the year. Yes. Question from Mr. Hill. Um, the uh, scheduled repairs for the bridge, uh, will there, that still involve the movement of utilities? Um, I understand that the county had an issue with uh, scheduling our request to do this, and I was wondering if that is still the case, what is going to have an impact on our uh, schedule of repairing the bridges. No, but the county, the issue with the utilities has been addressed. There are, um, my understanding, modified hangers that are going to be added to the bridge because the, the utilities are actually part of the problem that gave us a structural issue right now. Um, and uh, Jerry explained to me that there's hangers that are being installed to properly mount the utilities so we can have a proper transition structure during this repair. And the issues with the county have been addressed that they are able to relocate within whatever these new hangers are. And uh, again, that, that one's beyond my, I'm, I'm not a bridge guy either, so <laughs> it's beyond my technical expertise, but that is, uh, everything has been addressed so far. Thank you. Um, at Huntington Park, uh, the playground has been removed by Public Works, and the facility is ready for the field conversion from uh, baseball to soccer lacrosse. Um, Jerry's working the schedule with the, the contractor, and that is uh, will be taking place throughout the month of October. I don't have the firm dates on completion yet, but uh, we are we'll them mobilizing their resources in here. <clears throat> At the clubhouse, as I kind of said already, we. We've started the process on mold uh, repairs. We are uh, seeking estimates to be presented to the board for HVAC and repairs. Those are substantial dollars. They're above my purchasing authority, so um, they will come back to the board once we have a, a quantified scope and cost uh, for approval. Um, in the meantime, Public Works is, uh, is working on uh, drainage and extending the existing French drain system to get water away from the building so we eliminate the penetration foundation. Um, we also had some issues with windows leaking, but Eddie was very resourceful and found out that our windows in question, we actually had, I guess, spares, if you will, from where additions have been added to the building. We have very well-preserved original windows that are mounted inside, dividing rooms. So rather than us having to buy new windows and invest more money in, a, in, in custom windows, Eddie's able to move the the original windows that have been very well preserved inside to replace the ones that are leaking on the outside. And he's going to case in the openings on the inside to leave a, a, a nice finish for us to, you know, move forward and use. They're, they're really non-functional on the inside of, we just built walls around them and let them be. So I, I, I was, that, that was a, a great work on our public works team on saving us money there. Uh, with the drainage they're also addressing, uh, the, the gutters and the, the capacity and, and management of the water coming off the building so that assuming we can replace the roof and get the water off the roof once it gets into the gutter, we're going to get it away from the building and, and keep it all outside. Of the extent of the roof repairs. Sorry, what is the extent of the roof repairs? Unknown today. Uh, we have um, air... H, the, the compressors for both the walk-in refrigerators and our air conditioners are on risers that were screwed through the roof um, in, into the into the substructure. So we have everywhere that there was something mounted on the roof, we have holes through, which over time have become unsealed and they're letting water in. Um, we have in th that, that roof, because of additions to the building, is actually... There's the slope components, which are asphalt shingle. We have flat roofs, and in, in some of the areas, because of the age, uh, we have three layers of roofing, which are all failed layers. When we've had a problem, we just want to put another layer over top. And uh, there's issues in the flashing. Um, and that's what, I, that's what I know exists. To the extent of what it's going to take to fix that, we're waiting for the 
qualified personnel to give us the the exact scope, and then with that, we'll be able to get accurate pricing to the, the work. Out. <coughs> and that well, is what. Thank you. Okay. Uh, public comments. Sir, could you please go to the microphone, state your name and address. Well, okay, I can usually speak loud enough anyhow. My name is Richard Neiman. I'm at 45 Wood Duck Drive. Happens to be a waterfront home. Not bragging, not complaining. Um, I have three suggestions for the board. By the way, welcome to the new board. I wasn't able to make your five hour session. I'm not sure if I'm happy or sad about that, to be honest with you. At any rate, there's three suggestions I'd like to offer you all. And um, one is on the bulkhead reserve. I wasn't here to hear that session, but I'm hoping you'll hold the bulkhead reserve in abeyance as far as our assessments next year if we still don't have a bulkhead program. In other words, uh, we're accumulating money in the bulkhead reserve. Last I saw it was about one and a half to two years worth, and we're going to add a third there without a bulkhead re uh, program. I've heard that there is a program, there isn't a program. I've heard that the program's 30 years old and it's done. Second thing I'd like to suggest to you is that when you put the budget together this year, I used to budget in this area, that was my background. We never budgeted for 100% of our salaries. We budgeted for what we thought we historically would have to pay out. So if there were six of you on the board, we might only have to budget for five of you because of a pay lag. Uh, the pay lag being because of a hiring lag, rather. So in other words, one of you all might not be there. We don't have to pay you. Historically in Ocean Pines, we, my guess is, and I have not seen all this data, that we are budgeting more than what we're paying out. Now, there's an exception to that. That's when you have to pay an old manager for nine more months. I'm sorry about that. Well, what I'm suggesting is you still budget 100% of the salaries. Put down whatever percent there is every year that's a pay, a hiring lag. Let's say it's 3%. Budget 97%. Put the other 3% into a rainy day fund or a contingency fund. That if we did want to pay out an extra $40,000 to a manager, or if we want to have an emergency situation or hire another person, we could do it. But it's it's apparent to what we're doing, changing the budget, bringing another person. Just a suggestion. But uh, if I can help you with that, or I've already talked to Gene about it, hopefully you can make that a more a better budget. Let me Paul put it out. I heard Brent say that uh, you are working with Ocean City. If I can hand you all these documents, you may have all seen them. <clears throat> if you'll spread them out, I appreciate it. Ocean City went to a, um, it says the Management Advisory Group International last October, and they did a pay policy cap on Ocean City top earners. Now, that would have been interesting had we done this in our prior, in our prior management. But anytime you have all these people, they should be seeing whether or not, number one, if they're classified as a genius, but they're really doing jerk work, you wouldn't want to pay them so much money. I'm just using that facetiously, okay? And uh, this also says, you know, comparable to other organizations, what should we be paying for these like jobs? Especially when you got Ocean City right next door to us and probably somewhat a comparable situation. That's all I'm going to say today. If uh, any of those, uh, if you want to hear any more about that or I can talk to you about it later, let me know. Thank you. Thank you very much. June Freeman, 60 Boston Drive. I'm not your first suggestion. I just want to say to the board, thank you very much for opening this up on Saturday. You're sending a clear message of money. Thank you. My concern is the country club. I've been here for four years almost, and uh, I know that it needs a lot of love and repair inside. But I think in the house can re repair some of these things. Uh, we've enjoyed it, and uh, we love it very much. Um, and I wanted to say I hope you consider 
given me a key to open that damn front door. I'm sorry, I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> See what I mean? I might forget what I want to say. Uh, it's been a pleasure because we have a lot of seniors and we have like eight to nine tables of bridge every Wednesday. And I, and I hate to say every single week we have to worry about the door being open. Now, many years ago, I used to get a key, but now they wouldn't give me one. So I'm asking for a key to open the front door, and I hope you'll give me permission. The other thing is, when you consider building or knocking down, I'm not a construction person, and I know you are the expertise, and you'll make the right decision, whatever it is. But I hope we'll keep it because I think it can be repaired. And uh, I think that's about all I have to say. But I would like to have a key. And I used to have one many years ago. So thank you, board, and do the best you can. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, again, I'd like to thank uh, you for us. Please, please show your name, Anna. Craig Coleman from uh, Mumford's Landing. I'd like to thank you for having the session on Saturday to make it more accessible to those that work. Appreciate it very much. Uh, just two quick things. I hope the uh, food vendor truck uh, procurement is dead. I uh, recommend that you put out bids if we ever need somebody to cook food and serve it at a function. Uh, we don't need the liability and logistics costs of that when it's not in use. Uh, secondly, with all the new faces here, just a concept I'd like to uh, put forward. We're always looking for new sources of income in our community. Uh, please consider the development of the uh, Beachfront Club into a condominium or high-rise, reserving resources on several floors or whatever to benefit Ocean Pines, and turn that into a cash cow. It'll be a long-term capital project, so nothing, I think, on our watch, but... Uh, Perhaps it's a seed that could grow. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, my name is Judith Duckworth. I live at 37 Westfield Circle, right next door property that was the subject of the fast track cleanup, which was spearheaded by Brett Hill and by the board. Uh, their, their first week of, of installation for the new members. Uh, Brett accomplished something that I haven't been able to end for, that I haven't been able to get through my own request to Public Works in, since 2014. The property next to me, 4939 Westfield, has been in foreclosure for a period of five years, during which grasses, weeds, including eight and a half feet tall phragmite that were never there before the foreclosure, fell into my yard, and the phragmite were invading my property four feet. When I called Public Works attention to this matter, I was told time and again, you can do anything you want on your side, but we can't do anything on the foreclosed property side. I had paid $700 to have the Phragmites taken care of on my side. I knew it wouldn't happen unless something was done. This very day, a year ago, I had gotten the attention of President Pat Renault, and I got a call that morning. From the, board, from the public works saying they were going to spray the Phragmites on the foreclosed property side, which wouldn't have happened if I hadn't said something to the present or, or the board. Now I would like to tell you about Brett Hill and the astonishing thing he did. With that, I had sent an email to the board of directors Sunday with pictures 21st of 39 Westfield, and Brett was there 7 o'clock in the morning to take a look at the property. Even, he was not even installed. His first day of installation, as member of board of directors, he pr promoted a motion to have 39 Westfield clean up the cold fast track MO4. By the end of the week, he had gotten enough board members to approve to have this cleanup done. I have never seen in five years this property cleaned up front, sides, and back. The problem was it wasn't just an unpleasant and attractive property. It was now a public safety issue. I experienced this myself on the evening of August 16th when I saw trespassers at 11 o'clock at night with flashlights going along the base of the 39 West. And I called the police. 
I was told by PFC Charles Taylor at that time that there were a number of calls and had been. I presented Mr. Hill and and Tom a listing of the 17 calls that had been made relative to 39 Westfield regard to trespass issues, suspicious persons, etc., and premise checks since the foreclosure. And as the property looked so terrible, more and more people took it, just came in, rode their skateboards, took pictures, came in any time, day and night it seemed. So I'm hoping that the cleanup will put an end as, as, as my neighbor on the right of the property said, we'll now be able to see who's going in there. So um, I just wanted to thank, again, Brett and all the members for doing an outstanding job. Thank you so much. Thank you. Howdy. Ernie Artis, 37 Quarter Staff Place. I've been a homeowner here for over 18 years, and I'm happy with the new board and all the changes that have been made. Thank you all for doing a good job. I believe you're packing in the best interest of the community. But I'd like to see another change. You hear all these reports about the police department doing a great job, but then they're disrespected with the merit system. Merit rate system is a terrible system. It disrespects the police every day. You lose loyalty, you lose productivity must respect this. If one, two, or three percent raise is given, they all need to get Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. Good morning. Jack Ferry, Jr., Ocean Parkway. Uh, Mr. President, board members, thank you very much for stepping up and serving, setting us up in a new direction. There are a lot of wonderful things that are going on. And I'd just like to give my opinion about a huge divisive issue in uh, Ocean Pines, and that's the yacht. My family and I love the yacht. We are there two to three times a, a week, all year round. I think a lot of things that are going on are very dismissive and disrespectful of people who are there and people who have complaints. I don't want to belabor, and again, this is in the past. I don't want to belabor the sins of the past. I just want to say this as my opinion about the future and going forward. Uh, I know that there is a culture there has been a culture that was established, and it was a culture that was dismissive of people who would complain, and I feel it was very dis disrespectful also of those of us who were saying that things were, were going wrong, were a problem. I know this for a fact because we had two college-age uh, family members who stayed with us two summers, and under a former general manager, not general manager, general manager of the Yacht Club, uh, their training consisted of being told that if anyone complains, disregard it because they're pioneer whiners. That's what the staff were told. So we know that that culture is there. We know that it was very dismissive of us. And I want to say it's very difficult to change a culture. And there's little things that pop up. Uh, when the new regime took over, and uh, I'm not saying anything about Bob's skills or talents, not Bob, uh, Bob at the Yacht Club, or the Yacht Club. But to say that he's been there from the beginning isn't a, isn't a ringing recommendation for me because he was grew up under that culture. And one of the things that he said was, Tim's food was very good. These people here weren't ready for it. Again, very disrespectful, very dismissive because the food was not good. We kind of personified Einstein's theory of doing the same thing over and over again, hoping for a different result, because we did eat there all the time. We did drink there all the time over the years, hoping that something better would happen. And recently, in the, I think in the paper yesterday, maybe, the clubs committee meeting and saying, you know, the old folks here who complain. I don't know. The old folks here are also at the Novos, and they welcome us. And there are tailors, and they welcome us. And the Southgate Grill, and they welcome us. And about two weeks ago, in the Independent, there was a very large article uh, from the Sunset Grill saying, thank you, Ocean Pines, and here are all these specials. So for people who say, you know, Ocean Pines, the Aqua Man, one of the problems is out of the way. People here can certainly find their way over to West Ocean City and to uh, Sunset Grill. So Buddy Trala obviously appreciates our business too. So I think it's very dis it has been dismissive, it's been disrespectful, and I think that culture needs to be looked at. Again, the clubs committee too is saying about the older folks here who are complaining, the younger folks are here. We don't need to wait for the numbers to come out. We're there all the time and we see the number of people who are on that deck. That you have a Friday and even some of the Fridays aren't that good. 
The past two Sundays we were there, there were less than two dozen people in the whole building. By 5.30, nobody at all in the dining room. So I, I just want to say going forward, again, it is very difficult to change a culture. There are a lot of wonderful things that are going on, and I know you're going to lead us in a new direction, in a great new direction, and we still have a lot of hope for the future. But I just want to let you know my opinion about that, and that is something that you need to be diligent about going forward. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sir, I, I just want to say it. Um, it as far as in, in my interim role, uh, I, I would estimate about 30% of my time is being spent with Jerry and the staff there at the Yacht Club. Um, what, what you read in the paper, it does, definitely does not represent my opinion of the residents of Ocean Pines or a direction I'm trying to lead the Yacht Club. Um, the advisory committee brings many great suggestions, and I would say uh, take everything you read with a grain of salt because those committees are valuable to us. But they are strictly a body of insight, and the direction does come from myself at this point and Jerry, and and trickles down through the rest of our staff. And I can assure you that our priority is for the service of the residents of Ocean Pines. Um, we understand the need for a cultural change, and and many of the other changes there. And your opinions are not being overlooked. Thank you. I didn't mean anything negative about the clubs committee. My dad, for 17 years, off and on, was on the clubs committee. Well, uh, it, it's, and I just said that sometimes the way things are portrayed is not always uh, the way they actually are. Yeah, just to add something. Uh, the clubs, uh, I'm a liaison, uh, and I was at my first clubs committee meeting as liaison, and the one that was quoted, and uh, the quote wasn't exactly accurate. It, it uh, basically what the clubs committee was talking about is that there is a certain fond memory among people who have been here for a while of the old Yacht Club. And that, in fact, while that's perfectly understandable, uh, we really have to move on. So uh, that, was, that was what that comment was in reference to. You know, some of the old timers remember the old Yacht Club. They like the old Yacht Club. But we have a new Yacht Club now. So that was all that was. I did forget something. I'm sorry. Uh, my name is Anna Folds, and I'm in Section 10. And I did forget to say that, and I feel bad that I, I missed the word, uh, and I hope you'll delete it from the minutes. <laughs> and also, and when you consider the Art Club, whatever decision you make, which I'm sure is great, will you please see that we have a place to play regular, okay? And just put that in your mind. Again, thank you for all your good work. And I thank remember you. that. Are there any other public comments? Good morning. I'm Larry Bohannon from 27 Castle Drive. And again, I have comments about the uh, service and training of the people at the iPhone. I read recently in the paper that they're down to like four served um, preset, but you're talking about changing a culture and training these people. This is a perfect time to make sure that the people that are going to be hired, as well as the four remaining servers that are there, are trained properly so that you can change that culture. In a recent visit to the uh, the yacht club. We ordered just a couple of appetizers. My wife ordered mussels. She got down to the end, and there were three mussels that weren't open. So I called the server over and asked them if they could send it back and have them cooked a little further so they would open up. The person said, nah, I can't do that. And I said, what do you mean you can't do it? Just take it back to the kitchen. Tell them to cook it some more. You know? She said, well, I'll try. <laughs> I'll try, you know? And um, so then I also ordered a second course. 45 minutes later, hadn't received it. I asked the person, you know, what about, what about my uh, it was, uh, fish and chips? She says, don't you see how busy it is here? <laughs> I said, no, I don't. I don't see anybody eat. There was eight people in the bar, and she was talking to somebody over there the whole time. So, you know, these people don't have a clue when it comes to 
customer service, and they need to be trained properly. And Jerry's been there long enough now that I think that they should have been trained. The ones that are there should have been trained, and any subsequent people that they hired should have been trained in how to serve people and how to treat, talk to people. So I think this is a perfect time to be able to, uh, it, you know, institute that change. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir, in the back. I'm Steve Ballas. I've been here for 13 years, two different houses. But uh, um, I hear what everybody says about the Yacht Club and stuff, and I think those are assessments, but then, uh, you know, I've seen them have bands and stuff, and they get large groups that when they have bands sometimes, sometimes they don't. And I think the uh, don't has to do with uh, serving the customer. Yeah, like that. So, but I think the club needs to look at what they're trying to serve. Uh, I know if I go to want to watch multiple football games or go over to Green Turtle or Pub or somewhere, showing them, you know, it's hard to get the same kind of atmosphere in our yacht club. If I want to have a great top service dinner, I don't go to the yacht club. Uh, if I want to be uh, the person that is on a very restricted uh, uh, budget, uh, it's hard to go to the yacht club. So there's, there's different uh, groups of people within Ocean Pines that you could service at the yacht club, big facility. You know, the bar is not set up very well to sports games, menus, bar. Uh, what we need to get the high end, low end. You know, Fagers uh, does high end. We go to the Napa Shot Club, get a high end. Uh, so I don't think we're targeting the right groups. And I think surveys to find out what people want would be a great start to figure out what it is they want out of the And, uh, you know, better service and meals, obviously. Saying that to draw people there better through the service. My, we don't go to the yacht club as much as I'd like to, go, but because I just don't go. So, anyway, my just shine thoughts. Thank, Thank you. Can I do this one more time, John? Yes, sir. So. <laughs> Say my name and address again. I just did. <laughs> On the yacht club, uh, I, I've been here since 1984. I've watched the, the whole routine. It used to be great back in 84, believe it or not. Any, at any rate, I come down to there's only a, a simple solution. It's called good service, good food, good price, consistent. And if there have been times you go and you might get a good meal consistently. The next time you go, you don't even get your second beer. So... The other thing that I see with our yacht club is we can't make up our mind which way we want to go. Number one, I don't think there's a yacht and a club, just like there's no country or a club. But uh, I mean, if we called it Henry's or something, we'd be better off because yacht club connotes expensive to people that are tourists. During this summer, most of the restaurants around here just suck up the money from the tourists. We know that. In the winter, if they stay open, now they suck up to the seniors. And that's, if you go over there, I used to even see our, our previous uh, manager, you know, over at Sunset Grill. That tells you something. So, I mean, if you're going to stay open, stay open, good food, good service, good price. Consistently, that means a whole bunch of specials in the winter. Stick it to the tourists in the summer like everybody else does. Thank you. Thank you. Any more comments? Any more Capital purchase request. Tom, on these requests, we're, I, I'm doing this I, I kind of a, a little bit out of practice for the past. Um, most of the requests here are within the realm of uh, my abilities as general manager to purchase on my own, um, but I'm bringing them up here because they're deviation from our budget, and I, I just want to be aware and have a group. In our working session for those of you that weren't there. Um, the Beach Club pool resurface is 
uh, was brought to my attention. Um, at the end of the season, we have a lot of plaster that is peeled. It's in need of repair. I'm working through the quote process. If the quotes will be under the $15,000 limit that I'm allowed to approve with three competitive quotes, but I'm asking the board for approval as it's not a in the current capital budget for this year to, to move forward with uh, with that repair process. The benefit of that would be, as we stated in the working session, we can have the pool resurfaced and repaired prior to opening Memorial Day, where if we wait to postpone it to the next budget cycle and have an approval made first, we're not going to have a contractor in place with the work done. We have a motion to accept the recommendation of the uh, acting general manager. I so I move. Is there any so basically, you're allowed to get on that. Second. I second. Is there any further discussion on this stuff? Call for the question. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any questions? Yes. The second request is uh, related with the pool resurface. If we make the investment in, in, in repairing the plaster and resurfacing that pool, as we've done with the other pools, including Mumford, this one, the racket club, uh, the process going forward then is to cover those pools so that um, we can maintain a greater life out of the plaster and not go through the process of completely draining them. And uh, the recommendations that, that yields to a, a premature failure of the plaster. The pool cover, based on our estimates from the previous pools that we did, Mumford, this one, the racket, both larger puts us at about a $10,000 budget. Again, that's within the realm of uh, what I can approve personally as the acting general manager, but I, I'm asking for, again, that's outside of our budget. If it, um, if we are able to get the pool resurfaced this fall, we'll be covered this winter. If we, if we get pushed into an early spring, the cover would be purchased in the spring, which is put in the store. So at the end of next season, we need to Motion to accept recommendation of the acting general manager. Purchase of a full cup. So moved. Second. All in favor? Any Aye. discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Seventeen. The next request is for the replacement of the gym floor. Uh, this is in the packet. Um, the recommendation. Uh, for the gym floor. This is in the capital budget for fiscal 17. Um, we are uh, going slightly over the budget based on the discussions from the work group moving forward with a wood floor product in, in lieu of the existing vinyl rubber floor, which would include a, uh, a humidity treatment to the floor and the proper barrier so that uh, we maintain the useful life. The, the wood floor is a more expensive floor. However, the cost of maintenance and the overall lifespan are greatly reduced, so the overall cost of ownership is lower in the long run. The recommendation for Jerry Avita is to award the contract to Signature Sports Flooring for, this, for the Signal Wood Flooring System. Uh, that's a total cost of $78,752. Um, I would ask for a 5% contingency in there, um, and, and the only caveat is that these quotes are, are, are dated. This has been a process going on for, for several months. It was supposed to have been installed at the end of August, as originally quoted, and we're pushing for an installation in December, and uh, I, I just want to make sure, since we are already over budget, that I don't have to come back mid-process and ask for more. Motion to accept the recommendation of the general manager. So moved. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 <clears throat> uh, the next request uh, is for a power washer for the Recreation and Parks Department. This is a trailer mounted unit um, that will, um, it has both a, uh, a heater on it as well. Uh, this is for the maintenance of our rec and parks facilities, including playgrounds, um, courts, et cetera. Um, the, the request uh, from Sonia is to, I believe, to Eastern Water Glass. Or, I'm sorry, it's a word to Northern Pool Company 
uh, Northern Company in your packet was $7,499, and that does include the trailer, the, and that is the lowest price bid. Our budget was $7,700, and we're $201 lower. I have a motion to accept recommendation of the general manager. So moved. I'll second. Any further discussion on this uh, purchase? All in favor? Say aye. 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 Okay. None opposed. <laughs> the, the the last item is for the golf club uh, mold repairs. Uh, this is. This was done as an emergency action. It is, it, it, in total, all of, all of the work involved here is going to come into unitized quotes of different vendors that is, again, within my purchasing authority. Um, however, we did not have capital budget going into the building specifically for the work that's being done. And I am asking the board, uh, just for the, the overall approval for the, the use of funds, um, even though they were within my purchasing authority, uh, the the request at this point is going to be for a total of fifty thousand dollars from the capital budget to subcontracted vendors, and an additional twenty five thousand dollars into the budget for public works uh, for the use of their employees and resources to perform repairs on the buildings I was discussing, such as uh, the windows, gutter repairs. <laughs> uh, the the contract repairs would include the uh, serp pro remediation. Um, we, we also have an additional area that was discovered outside of what Serpro originally quoted um, in, the second, in the second floor attic structure that we, we we're going to need a second quote on. Um, and then we're going to have the repairs from the areas that they damage or remove to, uh, to address the mold and get into it. I know we're taking out the walls of both uh, John's former office and the ladies' locker room. Um, the... The budget request there will be $50,000 in contract. Okay. I have a motion to accept the recommendation of the general manager. Uh, if, let's see if I get this clear. We're going to do basically all of the work is going to be downstairs. It, the, all of the work is going to be into, into the areas where we find all the initial survey from SurfPro, and I have their initial number just to get in was seven thousand dollars. It's a very low number. However, in further investigation, there when the roofing contractors came in, we found additional mold. That SurfPro just focused on the areas where we saw water damage. So we know we now have to go and look at a second repair on the second floor because of mold that was present up there that was not addressed in this seven thousand dollar quote that's in the package, and all that's. All that we have quoted now is demo and removal. We do not have rebuild and repair, which is going to have to come with that. Those are going to be smaller units, which I believe when we competitively bid would still be under the fifteen thousand dollar unit mark. But it's when you add the whole project and some, that's where I see we're going to be pushing, you know, forty to fifty thousand dollars. So uh, I, I wanted to. Make the board aware of the the money that was involved in repair. I see that as a shift from the capital budget to cover those expenses, and it's not currently in the capital. Okay, so there are going to be basically. I'm just trying to clear what you're asking. Um, you're basically asking for board approval to receive both uh, and you don't know what. Now, that that is that is correct. But since we're going down the road, it's going to be more than putting a couple thousand dollars in. Like in the case of the the pickleball courts, we or the, sorry, the platform courts that we started moving forward with, that was a very small repair that was well within my operating authority and no major impact on the budget. A fifty thousand dollar repair, when it's all said and done in the golf club, I feel is a significant impact to the budget. And even though the individual units. I am authorized to move forward with independently. I felt it was best to bring the discussion to the board and have the approval of the board for spending that money. So, we, so you want approval to spend up, not to exceed? Not to exceed 50000 in contract expense, and I'm requesting $25,000, uh, up to $25,000 in the budget of public works, because that would be going to their maintenance expense, um, which is not currently there. They're 
at approximately 50% of their maintenance budget on repairs already done this year, and the, the money does not currently allocate budget. We would traditionally just go over and ship the money later. I'm essentially giving you the forewarning that that's the direction we're going in and looking for the, the agreement that we should go in that direction. Yeah, I understand. So you basically look for, I'll call it $50,000, not to exceed $50,000 in contract. Uh, and another $25,000 is how it works, but uh, yeah, and public works time is charged to the building, so it, I'm looking for up to $25,000 into the maintenance budget of the golf club for public works. Not a blanket, throw money at public works, but focus to that particular okay. unit in our budget. Yeah, I understand. Uh, your project, it, and this work is immense. Yes. I'll make a motion uh, to accept general recommendation. Uh, uh, budget $50,000. We spent $50,000 not to receive contract. And uh, add uh, $25,000 budget to the public works. Uh, That's correct. That, that correct. Yes, that is. Okay. Have a second. I'll second. Are there any further discussion? Yeah. Uh, I just have a question, just for clarification. If we need to do any transfer reserves to operating that it is involved here, and we're not sure at this point that needs court approval, so we could give the approval to move forward with this project, and if a further approval is needed, do that separately, just for clarification. Yeah. That's your department. Okay. <laughs> I think that works. I'm just, just telling you I need the money. So how would... And maybe add it to the motion. Yeah, that's well, good. Add to the motion, Who's however wondering? we do that, that uh, clarification on uh, funding for project um, once the project is underway. How, how I think that wording works. True. Uh, uh, yeah, it, 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 it would. I think it should be more than that, garbage wise. Well, I think it should be that money will be expended out of historical reserve. This is clearly deferred maintenance of money. It's funded out. Okay, I, I think I'm, I'm thinking from an accounting standpoint about what is, okay. Yeah. Can we just add something to the motion just for further, just in case, just, sure. just. I think, you know, we, uh, basically, I mean, what I would propose is that money be expended out of our historical reserve account, which is specifically yeah. for that, that yeah. kind of, and this sort of, that kind of that would work. Okay, so, that, that, we have to pull more, so we more, just add that to the, add to the money. Yeah. That's the money. And now the public works, uh, on the other hand, we're, that's, that's a different thing. The 25000 uh, is added to the public works operational budget. Well, that was my question, Dave. That was where I was going with that because if it's part of the project, I mean, from an accounting standpoint, it capitalize with the contract. It could be. So, right. so I think that's why I think we need some verbiage. And and if it is capital, with the board, it would be coming out and of with the, the same board's reserve. approval. Yeah. To use the reserve as needed. Well, can we get board approval right now? Yes, yeah. that's what I'm saying. I said. Yeah. Maybe okay. So we'll add that. But both of that, those both the public works will that would be capitalized labor and the uh, fifty thousand. So that will come out of this. So, so, so we're clear on that. We can, you know. <laughs> All right. I, I, I believe the repairs of this golf club is put off too long. And I'm glad to see that movement in the right direction. At least it's a start. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.
Okay, CPI violations. I guess this is. Um, we have a violation on 141 Teal Circle where we have a uh, second boat lift installed without permit. This issue has uh, been uh, present with us for five years and one month. The initial inspection was August 18, 2011. The boat lift was temporarily removed uh, during a bulkhead repair. Um, and uh, as of uh, last October, uh, the the, the, the boat lift was removed, and uh, the owner was notified not to reinstall it. Uh, upon inspection on July 8th of 2016, um, the inspector noted that the second boat lift put back up without our approval. It was discussed at the ARC meeting on August 2nd of 2016. And uh, the member was requested to uh, submit notice in the application due for the second boat lift uh, on September 12th. Follow inspections completed, uh, the boat was still present. No information received from the member, the member and it's been reported to the Board of Directors uh, for a violation. The recommended action is uh, this reported to the Ocean Pond attorney for, for uh, further further action the owner to have the boat was removed or properly printed. I was I attended both of those uh, meetings as Lee Lee is somewhat familiar uh, with this case. But this member, I believe, no intention at all um, was given an opportunity by the committee uh, to show by uh, reasons and substantiate uh, since he himself suggested that part of the second vote. Um, I think that given the amount of time that uh, this is going on, the fact that it's not going to vote, it, it brings up another issue it's, you have to be to see it, but in fact, he does have per, permits, other permits. He has permits from the town, right? he, so he has the required permits. But he does not have an ocean fund, uh, and and perhaps does not think this uh, requires. It. But in fact, he does because a homeowners association, while those Permits from the county are necessary, and, and from the MPA, homeowners association has the right to be more restrictive in its its covenants and its design guidelines than other agencies, which also have jurisdiction. And that's an important right uh, to me. I mean, it tells us that we can set standards. I mean, we have to comply with the state county standards, but we can set standards, our own standards. Uh, I come from the park, which is a place which has much more restrictive covenants than Ocean Pines does, although we comply with all of Ocean Pines. So I think this is this is an issue that is just beyond whether or not to vote. I think you do have to vote. I mean, in my opinion, we should go to the and we should get a court order to have that vote with the Yes? Any other discussion? Um, I understand what uh, Director Stevens is suggesting here, and looking at the history of the issue, uh, it all leads to that conclusion. I was just wondering, with uh, both lift being present and the fact that uh, the homeowner has secured the uh, county's uh, permit, um, whether, assuming that no actual violations have taken place with regard to the location of the sick both lift, and that it actually complies with our overall rules and regulations, um, 
before taking a legal action, is there another option that exists that could, should be explored? Uh, that's the only thing I would like to know before I take a, make a vote. Well, I, the reason I believe it's coming to us is that it does not comply with their guidelines. And so, so it's, so that's the first issue. And looking at the history, there has been five years of communication with this homeowner where there has been a failure to, for any action to take place. So I believe after five years, I think we could classify as every other possible action has been taken. And by the way, I think, just I want to emphasize this point, it is a violation. That's what wasn't clear. Thank you very much. Specifically, what's the action request? That the either the boat lift be removed or the proper documentation be provided to ARC as they've asked for, and a permit uh, a, a permit be requested from Ocean Pines to bring it into compliance. If I could make a suggestion, um, I think the main thing is that the boat will
the reactivation of this committee will further assist the Board of Directors in establishing goals, objectives, and priorities related to our all-important golf amendment. Is there a second to the motion? I'll second. Okay. Any further discussion? I'll call the question. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Cheryl Hanshaw. Cheryl. I'm sorry. For, for the question on the motion to reactivate C11, the Golf Advisory Committee, there was a call for a vote. Sorry, not on the tape. Thank you. Motion for technology work group, uh, Doug Parks. So I'd like to make a motion that the, the board approve the creation of an ad hoc working group, which is authorized by Section 10.01 of our bylaws, whose purpose is to address the current OPA technology issues. Uh, there's some background information that the, uh, the uh, OPA Information Technology Initiative is to investigate current use of technology and recommend changes as required to meet the needs of the association. Known limitations and the functionality of the current technology platform that in some cases is affecting the OPA's ability to support critical business functions. Uh, the uh, the uh, motion is to create a working group that will consist of volunteers within the OPA community who have a technology background and can effectively participate in evaluating the use of technology both now and going forward for the OPA to support business requirements. Uh, you know, we've discussed it at length at the um, at the working group session, so uh, I think uh, rather than worry with all the other details, the high level synopsis is that we're looking to form that group, make sure that we can look at, again, the technology needs of the organization and invest wisely. Have a second. Any further? Have a second. I'll second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Raise your hand and say aye. 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 Any opposed? Cheryl? Cheryl? I said aye. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Sorry. Definitely zero. Okay. Uh, motion bulkhead replacement program. Uh, Director Hill. <coughs> Um, I move that the bulkhead replacement program be suspended for fiscal year 2017 in order for an engineered scope of work to be created, bid, evaluated, and award awarded. Additionally, I request the transfer of capital funds from the bulkhead reserves to the public works operational budget to cover the cost of repairs on bulkheads not being replaced this year. These operating funds will be used by public works employees for completing repairs as well as time and material subcontracted services. As a background, the current contract with Fisher Marine is dated 2010 and expired in 2013. Complete scope of work has not been generated for over 10 years, and environmental laws have changed to process new applications and the requirements for what we need to present for the bulkhead work. The purpose of this motion is to properly bid work that amounts to over 5% of our annual budget. In the time since this work was last bid, costs have changed that could potentially allow for a longer life product to be installed for the same price as the wood bulkheads that we're currently using. By suspending the program for one year, the association will be able to properly <clears throat> evaluate the best long-term construction strategy, obtain competitive pricing, and bolster reserves to continue this ongoing maintenance for next year. In the interim, public works and subcontractors respond to repair requests and maintain the integrity of the existing asset. Do I have a second? I'll second. With Purpose of discussion. Uh, I guess just one thing that I, I do support this motion. However, um, we had a comment, public comment, from Mr. Keith regarding the uh, basic budget, budget, which I think will be addressed during our budget deliberations. There is that, that, that. But right now, we're using them, but we're not using them as part of a replacement program, but rather as needed and transferring and operation, which I believe does require to Any further discussion? Call question, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, motion for Roach 
repaving program. <clears throat> I move that the road repaving program be suspended for fiscal year 17 in order for an engineer to go forth to be created, bid, evaluated, and awarded. Additionally, I'm requesting the transfer of capital funds from reserves to public works operational to cover the cost of repairs on roads not being completely repaved this year. These operating funds will be used by public works employees for completing repairs as well as time and material subcontracted services. Background, our, our roads are graded for replacement on the subject of scale by in-house resources. Our reserve study shows by useful life, we should have very little expenditure on road replacements in coming years, but due to utility work under our roads, many roads are suffering from bad patchwork, which is reducing the road grades and triggering early replacement. The purpose and effects, if we properly staff our public works department with in-house and contracted mechanisms to repair our roads, we can extend the cycle for replacement and more patching is necessary to maintain service quality. We need to properly scope our road design and repair specifications so that future utility work will not leave long-term damage that we are currently experiencing. I'll second. Any further second. discussion? Yes. Okay. Uh, when we were in our working session, we talked about the fact that the majority of the cut paid crosses in our roads produce the county, yes. and we had not been building the county. As part of this motion, are we going to be building the county for this repair work? It, um, as, as we were discussing in the working session, part of that, the recent repairs that are failed, we are able to go back to the county for, but in the case of a lot of the repairs out there right now, we are multiple years and multiple contractors past the initial damage so there there is not a recourse and that's part of um, the the statement in there of taking this year to have a set of engineered specifications for those repairs and also as we're going into further replacements setting a standard for how those roads are supposed to be built so that we have something to hold contractors accountable to we we have a limited ability to go back to the county right now. And if we don't give the county a standard and have standards in place, we're, we're kind of stuck with what they do to repair. And if we don't go back to them right away and the repair is, the repair is actually done satisfactorily at the time of it, if we have damage three or four years later because of the substructure of the road or a lack of a defined scope for them, th there's really not much we can do. I understand that that's the past, but for the fiscal year 2017 going forward, shouldn't we, if they in fact make us, we don't do the repair correctly, shouldn't we be filling them if we have to go out just for this period? Yeah, um, yes, most definitely. Thank you. I'd like to, yeah, I'd like to suggest that. Um, since this is somewhat of a new policy for us, suspending the program, uh, I think rather than concern ourselves with how we build the county, I think it would be very useful for us to consult the county and just discuss the problems that we have and uh, basically not going, you know, with our hat in the end or forward in a, a building in this, but to sit down with the county roads, talk about where we are, walk to them, see if they have any useful suggestions, or see whether or not yeah, if there's any way to talk about money necessarily. They have, they have resources we don't have. Uh, for an example, uh, I thought attached to this somewhat was a capital uh, request for a heavier Roller. I, I, I don't have a budget yet from Eddie on specific equipment. So at this point, and in the short term, we're looking at uh, contracted services where the cold patch technique that Eddie is able to perform, and that was part of the time and materials uh, budget we're looking at. Some of the work and the prep Eddie can do, but we are gonna we are gonna still rely on our, our contracted support for the heavy equipment and 
and the areas that we don't have the equipment or expertise to do ourselves in-house. More than likely, that equipment would be part of the uh, fiscal 18 budget cycle um, because it's probably going to be a large purchase. I don't want to amend the budget, and I will support it, but I would like to strongly suggest that I think that would be well received by the county. That, and, and I will take that action. Just to add to what Director Stevens uh, stated a moment ago, I think this was actually covered on Monday during the work session uh, the board conducted. Uh, we are all aware of the fact that uh, the uh, community continues to have water leaks throughout the community, and we will have future uh, road repairs as a result of that. So I think proactively reaching to the county and establishing some kind of a um, a process or a procedure uh, would be of benefit to both parties. So I'm very much in favor of that as well. And perhaps uh, during the next work session, maybe the GM, acting GM, can um, have uh, a scenario that the board would be able to evaluate if time permits. Thank you. Okay. Well, for the question, all in favor? Aye. 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 Then I have to close it 10 through. Okay. Six, four. Okay, that's it for uh, new business. So I'm going to go to appointments. I'm going to ask if it's okay if I read them all through, then ask for any objections at the end. Everyone no. okay with that? No objections. No objections to that? No. Okay. Stevie Parks, first term, bracket committee. Les Purcell, third term, chair, clubs committee. Steve Tuttle, first term, elections committee. Steve Habinger, first term, elections committee. Mark Heinz, first term, elections committee. Jeff Nepper, first term, bylaws and resolutions. Jim Trummel, first term, bylaws and resolutions. Susan Orkwater, the term extension of one year for aquatics committee. John Biola, chair, budget and finance. Ken Wolf, chair, environmental and natural assets. Marty Clark, chair, bylaws and resolutions. Additionally, the contract with Landscapes Unlimited calls for up to three representatives for the contract to the board. I'd like to appoint myself as the board liaison, Brett Hill, and Bob Kessler as the other two representatives. Do you have any objections to any of these um, appointees? All in favor? Say aye. 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 All opposed? Thank you. <laughs> any media questions? Okay, I'll make a uh, motion to adjourn into closed sessions with contractual issues admitted by the Homeowners Association Act, Section 11B, 11, or meeting of the Board of Directors or other governing body of the Homeowners Association or committee of the Homeowners Association may be held in closed session only for the following purposes. Discussion of matters pertaining to employees, personnel, specifically employment matters relating to all exempt positions, controller, aquatics and recreation parks, seasonal employees. And and for section six, uh, contractual negotiations regarding the legal appointment. Yes. Sir. I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. That concludes the uh, meeting for today. I'll come back on the uh, correct numbers. Okay. Okay. Okay.